Welcome to Renaissance Charge Videos. I'm Rick Friedrich and today we're going to look at the new four pole senior dual pole system. So the difference with this one now is that we have a half inch rotor on either side as opposed to the last couple of years we've had one inch which the magnets were just too strong well they weren't initially and then they made them stronger than they advertised them to be so we had to go down to a half inch which works just fine in fact the last ones we sent out had the one inch but we only put the half inch magnets in um, and of course the price is now double <laughs> for my my parts cost double now to me for um, half of the aluminum. <laughs> anyway, the other change that we have is new MOSFETs that are 1200 volts. These ones are better than the last ones and uh, 1200 volt diodes here. Now this is going to be running just at 12 volts um, and you can look at the previous videos of this motor where we talk about different things like the dual hall switch. This was a startup hall and this is the run hall. So it's going to run for a bit off of this hall and then it will end up switching over and then you'll see it kind of speed up because if there's no load on it um, if we put this closer to top dead center it will spin faster so it's basically RPM based if we have a very big load on this and low RPM we'll want to be in uh, this position here so that would be right now it's right about here the startup and the run is about there now if we run this at 24 volts this is the pot here that turns tensimeter that turns um, the on time at maximum it's the entire length of the on time of the magnets which are under here passing by the hall so the more we turn down the pot the narrower the um, on time now for 24 volts that becomes more significant because with the higher voltage we'll have a bigger field and we have to concern ourselves with the oncoming magnet so we don't want to bring the run hall you know, past top dead center um, and this is for a clockwise direction we could put the halls on the other side and do the same thing for the counterclockwise direction and you could actually have four halls and switch between them, obviously not when they're running. So, um, if we, we don't um, recommend with the code that we're using here, 36 or 48 volts, um, if we did want to do that, we'd have to turn the hall down or change the code so that it's a narrower on time, because again, the field will be bigger and it will fight against the oncoming magnet. So there's generator coils in this one. Um, I'll show that. I'm not going to load it down. You can see previous videos where we had you know, the big fan on it. And, um, different kinds of loads in the past. So it still does all the same things. Now again there's two purposes for this motor. Well, there's more advanced purposes too, but the main purposes are either running this without any mechanical load on it as fast as you can, and then um, running the generator coils with the resonance process, and then um, using that as the output while these two batteries get rotated around. Or you could load this down with the generator coils um, like a typical generator 
And as I've talked about in the past, if you have this going to a variac, for example, and you dial, you start from zero and move upwards, so zero would be like shorted out. And so when you short out these two wires, you'll see it will speed up. So as you go up to, say, about 25 volts on the variac, um, it will still be like in a semi-shorted condition, and the motor will still run faster than if you had no generator coils in them at all. So after that, then, so because that's a, there's a reason for that, and you can understand that with your own understanding, I guess. Um, but what happens is, at that point, it starts to pull more of a generator, uh, regular generator load upon the rotors. So up until that point, it's basically completely free. And that's really the whole purpose that we had for them in the initially, in the, in the beginning. But now we can load them down and put a significant load on this electrically and preferably in resonance which would mean the the frequency of each pulse and then you you combine that with the matching inductance and capacitance to have resonance and then you would have your output from there and then of course there's other things that we can do like we talked about in the third stage process where on the output going to the charging battery which is this is the charging battery um, so between the terminal and the battery terminal um, we can run various um, multiplying circuits and resonance as well and that can be done indefinitely where this becomes a prime mover and then um, you continually add more and more loads and we don't have any kind of product along those lines because that's kind of crossing the line, if you know what I mean. So this is what we have. And people can understand resonance and add to this. Um, you can do, we have four stage processes. And these batteries were running a little bit, so I just wanted to let them stabilize before I run it. So they're about the same actually now. So anyway, we have the stage one, which is what's set up here, the basic circuit. Stage two would be running this where we have five batteries. And you can see the loving path circuits teaching on that, where we would have say 24 volts to these batteries in series and then going into two batteries in parallel on the charging side. Well, actually this stays the same but we go from this terminal would go down um, to the positive of another battery this wire I should say, not that terminal this wire then goes down to the positive of two other batteries in parallel, all identical. So you'd have four batteries rotating all together. And then the negatives of both the input battery and the other charging battery bank, because this is a separate charging battery bank. So then all the energy um, would pass through all the electrons would pass through the one battery bank to the other through the motor. And so then you could rotate those battery banks around like we've shown in the past. So that would be stage two. Stage three would be adding um, a circuit um, inductor transformer resonance circuit between here and here on this charging battery here. So by the way, the second stage process, this battery would charge all the same as it did before, but then we have the two extra batteries being charged too. Um, and on this one, this would be charged 
with the potential difference between the two. The motor would be operating between the two potential differences between the positives between the two positives and this would charge accordingly. So stage three we could multiply out the energy as I mentioned. Stage four would be in series from here to here another coil there, a resonance coil. So on the primary side of the circuit we would add another process. And that's basically like a lot of these concepts come from the Benitez um, patents and that. So let's get started here. So we're going to be looking for the um, we're going to be lis looking listening for the little ding sound like I've talked about in the past. Ding. So you could see initially, oh, I should have shown the ammeter. You could hear it click over. So we got 15 amps. So it's pretty high right now because it's starting up. And then it will drop down as it speeds up. This is quite fast. It's dangerously fast. So you can see now that the amperage has dropped to 11 amps or so. Got 14 volts because it's come down. So once it comes down, it stabilizes and it will slowly up as the battery gets charged. Now, like I said, we can change this. Now there's still a little bit left of movement, or I could turn it down here. But for now, change the voltage and the amperage. This is an ideal spot for this. Bishop's oil in them, which then um, have to work themselves into the bearings. Basically, as the bearings get hot, the the, uh, the oil penetrates into the pores and coats the metal. Oops. It's a very strong magnetic lock. You can see it's moving the whole table. <laughs> So you can see it's charging the battery now, of course it's going to come down because it's not under load. And um, we can see the input batteries bounce back up and that will come back up 
essentially these will go back to where they were because it wasn't loaded very long. You should get a little bit of a gain on the charging battery. But the input battery in this case would probably go back to where I started around 13. So what else is there to say? You can watch the other videos um, to see other details that we've talked about. Um, there isn't any fifth stage process that I have ever thought of yet. <laughs> but thanks for watching.